Hi viewers, today on Campus Vibe is a continuation of the previous cultural episode. Today we are live at Bonre, the home of Kinti. In the previous video, we went to learn about how African culture or how, how African prints and accessories are modernized to attract youth and foreigners. But today we are here at Bonri to learn about the origin of Kinte in collaboration with 2AJ TV. Stay tuned. Hi, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Ike and you are? Uh, I'm Nana Kusia Sarri. Nana Kusia Sarri. Can we reach your time for two minutes? Two minutes. To spare. Oh, you said two minutes. No, I said some minutes. Some minutes. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Thank you. So, the name again? Nana Kusia Sarri. Okay, so Nana Kusia Sarri. Yeah, sure. Bone Ray is known as the home of Kinti. Why is that? Exactly. Uh, when you say Bone Ray is the home of Kinti, it simply means Bone Ray is Kinti and Kinti is Bone Ray. Okay. You know, Bone Ray is the grassroots of Kinti. So, the genesis of everything about Kinti started from here. That's why Bonia is notified as the home of Kinti. Okay. So, where is Kinti? How did we even get the name Kinti? Uh, the name Kinti derived from uh, a key word. The name Kinti derived from a key word, Kenten. Okay. Kenten. Uh, I don't know if you have seen uh, yes, Kenten before. That's a basket weaving in the English term. So, the name Kinti started when, where they discovered the ways and the manner a spider weaves its web. And you know, after a series of experiments, we uh, saw that the surface of the weaving was similar to that of a basket weaving. So the people of Bonnier called the new improved version a basket weaving cloth, which is Kenten Enyunon Tuma. So the name Kenten Enyunon Tuma was what was later corrupted to become Kente weaving. Mm -hmm. So that's how we had the name Kente weaving. When was the first Kente made? Uh, the first kente was made, uh, I think, somewhere 300 years ago. Okay. So at first, kente was worn by royalties, right? Exactly. So how do you think that it now became normal for anyone with the money to buy and then... Uh, you know, back in the olden times, kente was something very valuable. It's like a valuable asset to the Ashanti culture. Uh -huh. So after the discovery, the, the discovery of the cloth, you know, uh, and being presented to the royal chief of the Ashanti, who was the then and I was it to the first, you know, he adapted it as a royal cloth. You see that. So Kente was only made for the royals and people who was made in life. But you know, it got to a time that uh, there were some patterns that were as simple and as cheap that everyone can afford. So they then decided to make Kente as a public way, in such a way that everyone can uh, afford it. That's how Kente became like a public thing that everyone can you know, do. Okay, so every Kente you see has a different pattern. Mm -hmm. Do those patterns have meanings? Yeah. yeah, you know, when you say Kente, uh, uh, the very uh, thing that comes in mind is the history and the cultural aspect of it. So we say Kente is full of history and philosophy. Okay. Every part in the industry means something. It has a name and it also means something culturally. Okay. So as the cloth. When you say the cloth, that after the full piece of the cloth, okay. that one has a name and a cultural yeah. name. And when you say a pattern, the pattern involves. There are patterns or designs involved in the cloth. That one also has a name and a cultural okay. name. So every Kente has a cultural background to it. So I know that kente is now common, but there are there specific kente cloths that can be worn by any individual? 
Uh, I'm not being won by any individual today, except if you don't have the money. Okay. Yeah. And one thing about Kente that cannot be won by the individuals is the designs that were made for uh, His Royal Majesty. Especially when there is a program, a deba, or like a dekesi or something like that. There is a patterns that are specially designed for him. So except from that occasion, aside that, you know, it comes on social media and people begin by, you know, ordering for it. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so Nana said, please, how is Kinte? Uh, okay, when you ask how Kinte yeah. is being done, you know, it passes through many processes. Yes. You know, Kinte is not only seen in the room even as you see over here. There are processes it passes through before you come to the room with it. So, uh, looking at my brother here, he is doing the bobbin winding. Mm -hmm. So, over here, he will be rolling the strings on the bobbin. So this is one of the first pieces of the Kinte weaving. Right. So after the bobbin winding, we have what you call as warping method. Mm -hmm. That one too is the processes of obtaining the background. Then we have what you call as settings. So after all these processes being put together, then you come to the loom weaving. So let's first observe how we do the bobbin winding and after we can get into the loom for the other uh, aspects. Okay, Frank Collins. What is going on here? Is he trying to find a pattern? He's trying to find colors to use. What is he doing? Yeah, you know, uh, sometimes uh, there are some cloths that come with its own colors. Okay. And other times too, it comes with the uh, preference of the customer, the person who is ordering. Okay. All right. So looking at the colors you see here, these are the preferred colors from the customer who ordered. Mm. Uh, so you have to first sell it or roll it on the bobbin. Mm -hmm. So this is the number of threads he needs. And you can see there are some metallic strings over there that yes. is shimmer. Mm -hmm. uh, so he will be using or combining that uh, shimmer or the metallic string uh, with the thread. We mm -hmm. have the sick material. Mm -hmm. You know, when you come to the weaving tool, we have different types of the materials or the thread. Uh, we have the sick, we have the cutting and the rayon. So what he's using here is the sick uh, one. Mm -hmm. That's the most expensive one. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's joining with the metallic uh, thread or the shimmer yeah mm. so this is what he's doing so the uh, presence of the shimmer will give it a shiny appearance mm. it will give the it will beautify the cross mm -hmm. so that's exactly what he's doing so, so you have to first tear it on the bobbin then after you get it into the room all right so i can see some sticks are they sticks on the fighting they are crafted what are they um, i can see some sticks on the floor what are they uh, those are the bobbin like okay. I said, uh, you know, when you come to the loom, so we have different materials, the functions it plays in the loom. Okay. You know, we have the loom as a whole, and inside the loom, the material we have here, we call this one bobbin. Okay. Bobbin. So in weaving, uh, you stir the thread or the yarns on the bobbin, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have another thing called uh, shuttle. Yeah, me one of the shuttle. All right, so we have what you call as the shuttle here. Okay. So after he stir the strings on the on the bobbin, then you put the bobbin inside the shuttle with oh. the strings on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With the strings on it. When you get to the loom, you see that one also coming. Right. Okay. So, so this with is the help of the shuttle. It helps in creating the patterns in the weaving easy and fast. Okay. So, um, this is the first step in making sure. sure. Uh, so, if a customer wants um, a different part in a different color, can they order from here? Can you guys mix it for them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, from here, we have a variety of colors and different patterns in our showroom. Okay. I'm sure we will be going there. You see different types of kente clothes, their names and their meaning from there. Right. But uh, in case a customer needs a special cloth being ordered for, he will just she, she he or she will come with the pattern and the colors. Then we will design it for the person. Get to the loom, then uh, okay. we will see. So we oh, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. All right, over here. Alright, so this is the step two, right? 
All right, so uh, let's say this is the basis of the weaving. Okay. This is where we do the weaving. And like I said, uh, kente is a traditionally handmade material. Yes. Everything about the weaving is by hand. They okay. are all traditionally made. Uh -huh. There's no machine work applies to the weaving. So what you see here is the horizontal wooden loom or the wooden thread. Okay. Although kente never started in the loom weaving as you see here. Uh -huh. We also have what you call as the evolutions or the stages of the kente weaving. Okay. You know, before it was done in a small way, uh, before it was being transferred to the loom weaving. So what we have here is the horizontal wooden loom. That's the machine for every weaver. And inside the loom, we have different kinds of materials yeah, that forms see. play in the weaving processes. All right. All right. So what you see here on top of the loom, we call this one the pulley bars. The pulley bars. We call, we call it pulley bars. In the three word, we say inyinaso. Okay. Inyinaso. And when you come here, we call this one pulley. Pulley. And I uh, can say vidie. And inside the pulley, you see this small thing here. We call it fringes. And this one is called vidiba. Okay. Vidiba. Then let's come here. We call this one the headers or the nets. Okay. The headers or the nets. And the key word is uh, asa. Asa for the key word. Then Will we these have form part of the. This all forms part. After I will explain the functions it plays. Okay. We call this one the bitter or the reed. We call this one chire in the key word. Then we have here the header rams or the paddle. Okay. They can say ntiemu. Ntiemu. Then you see here, we call this one the rolling bar. Mm. The rolling bar. Uh, you see uh, uh, ayacidia. Yeah. Ayacidia. All right. Okay, so let's see the functions these materials play here. Well, I've already uh, explained the shuttle and the bobbin here. Yes. Okay. So the functions of the uh the pulling and the nets yes. and the fringes is that and also the head of rams here is that it helps in creating species in the crotch so you see when i step on the head of rams yeah. it opens the crotch here so it creates space in the crotch and whenever you see the space what you do is that you pass your shuttle through it then you stamp with the beta or the reed Okay. So this is the stamping beater. Uh -huh. This one is used to beat the crotch. Alright. Uh -huh. Alright. Then we have the pulley bars. The pulley bars in the weaving act like GS to the weaving. Okay. Alright. Always the, the the reed or the beater, you see the down of it needs to beat the crotch. Yeah. Needs to stamp the crotch. So whenever you see the middle beating the crotch. What you do is that you push the pulley bars upwards. Okay. So if you also want it, you see this time, it cannot beat it well. Yes. So what you do is that you push the pulley bars down. You bring it down, then it helps in beating it nicely. Okay. Okay. All right, then let's come to the weaving as a whole. In the weaving too, we have three main types of weaving. We have what you call as the single, the double, and the triple. Oh. When you say the single, that's the plain weaving with no designs. We don't make any designs in it. It's mostly referred to us as a background design. When I say background, this is the background of the cloth I am making here. Okay. Every kente has its own background. Oh. It could be yellow, red, mauve, depending on the pattern you are making or the color you are using. So looking around here, you can see different backgrounds being stretched across the plane. Yeah. yeah, that's it. All right, so the single weave is a plain weave. We don't make any design. Then the double weave has a design, but you first program the design. You program, you program the design. You arrange the design on top of the mesh or the oh. background before you start weaving. Then we have the triple weave, which has been classified as the most complicated one because the most work in the triple weave is done by the hand or the fingers. Compared to the single and the double, you need the assistance of the shuttle weave. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me practice uh, on the single whip. Uh, the pattern he's up to do is a single whip. It's a plain whip. Single so whip. let me do how, how how they make it. All right, so like I said, when you step down the head ramps, it opens the cross for you to pass your shuttle through it. Then you stamp with the bitter. So you come to the other side, the same thing, you stamp. You have to beat it every time you pass the shuttle. Yeah, every time you pass it through, you have to beat it. 
What happens if you don't? Pardon me? What happens if you don't? If you don't beat it, you know, you want your cross to be very nice, yeah. very fair. Uh -huh. So you have to beat it so that the string will position very well. Okay. All right. So you so see this here, is I'm, the not single make, yeah, I'm not doing any design, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you need is to just concentrate on the weaving. What yeah, happens so. if you make a mistake and then you want to reverse? In the single weave, the only time you can make a mistake is that. All right, let's watch my uh, hand and the foot. Okay. All right, when, wherever you see the be, uh, the shuttle, it has to match it with the foot. Right. So now that the shuttle is on my left, what I do is that I step on the left foot, mm -hmm. I lose the right one. Mm -hmm. So this is how it goes when you stamp. But let's uh, say mistakenly, instead of now the shuttle is on the right, instead of using the right foot, I mistakenly use the left, left one. Le you just watch and see what happens here. Okay. Oh. Did you see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is how it will go. Then it yeah. means you retrieve the string from, so, from the it. Cloth. Yeah. So it has to match it. the foot and the hand has to match. Yeah. Right, right, left, left right, left. left. Yeah. So that's how uh, we do the single weave over here. Mm. It's very simple. Okay. So the single weave is being classified as the most easiest and the fastest type of weaving. Mm -hmm. You don't make any design. It's mm. a very plain one. So after doing the single weaving, can you try to do designs on them? Okay. The only design you can do with the single weave is what you call as a stamping. We have the stamping that uh, we use the Edinkra symbols on. Okay. I don't know if you have seen the stamping before, the stamping code. No, I've never we seen We have that. different types of Edinkra symbols. Yeah. So from the single weave, you can either use the stamping on it, or we have what you call as the embroidery. Okay. Uh, that's the only way you can use machine in the painting weaving. Okay. So the embroidery will also embroider on the single weave. So that's what you can use the single weave for. Okay. So the double weave. All right. So uh, let me take you to one of the double weave, and you see All the right. differences in it. All right. So right now, where are we going? All right. So uh, we're going to see one of the double weave patterns, and also differentiate the double from the single. So over there, you can see, you will see that uh, moving from the single to the double, you can see some difficulties in it. And you see in the double weave, you'll be creating some patterns okay. compared to the single. There were no patterns. All right. So I can see different colors. Mm -hmm. wow. I told you that that uh, the background determines the pattern you are making. Okay. So is this machine different from the other one? No, the looms they are all the same. Okay. The looms sometimes it depends on the weaver. Then you will determine how you want your loom to be created. Right. Uh, some people want theirs to be very broad. Others want them to be very narrow. It depends on how you want it. Okay. How do you determine the pattern though? Uh, the pattern, you know, back in the olden times, our forefathers were able to create numerous of the pattern. Okay. That's why I said every kente pattern has a name and a cultural meaning. Right. So, assuming I am here, then you know some of the patterns. Then you call and order a cloth mm -hmm. by saying you need this pattern, maybe fatia fatia nkoma. You need okay. the cloth fatia fatia nkoma. Since I've been in the industry for a couple of years, I already know the pattern of Fatia Fatia and Koma. All right. What I will only ask you is the colors. Because Fatia, we have the blue color, we have okay. the black, we have the green, pink, different colors. So I will only ask the colors you need to uh, be doing your code for you. But for the okay. pattern, I already know the pattern in it. All right. mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. So how does the double weave work? All right. So this is one of the double weave patterns. Like mm -hmm. I said, in the double weave, you create patterns in the cloth. Mm -hmm. And like I said, before you start by creating the patterns, you will first program the pattern. All right. So looking here, this is the pattern he's creating. So he has programmed the pattern with these strings. Wow. Yeah. So as soon as you come into the loom, what you first do is that you create a pattern on top of the mesh or the background. All right. So as he decided to create this pattern, he already knows the pattern he is making. Okay. It's either you have pictured something outside. Maybe I saw some pattern outside and I decided to create a pattern to look the same or similar to it. All right. Or I already have something in mind. Then so when I come to the loom, what I first do is that after I do all my setup. What I do is to create my pattern. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you create the pattern, it has to be the same as what you have pictured. All right. So you communicate with the mind, then it brings out the pattern ahead okay. of you. Then you create it here. Mm -hmm. So being in the weaving, you have to be also more creative. All right. Yeah. The kinte weaving uh, comprises with different, you know, technologies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not just like being creativity. You know, when you get into the loom, you see some kind of mathematics in it, some uh, physics and other uh, stuff. So it comes with a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, so here you have to first create a pattern. So you see, when I pick one of the strings, you see uh, the surface of the pattern here will change. Yeah. When I pick a different one, the same thing. So the same thing applies to the pattern he's creating. Okay. So whenever he picks one of the strings, it creates the steps of the pattern for him here. Okay. That's it. So does this particular pattern have a name? Yeah. We call this one Makuma Swade. Oh. <laughs> That's the desire of my heart. Okay. And how did we get the name? How okay. did we get a name? You know, the name sometimes it depends on the river. All right. Yeah, maybe based on the circumstance or maybe a situation is in it, then you create a pattern to suit that uh, situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. So we, like I said, we have different names for it. And sometimes to maybe on a deba or occasion, then we create a pattern to also name after some people we've had okay. in our country. Like the Fatia Fatankoma I made mention. You know, Fatia was a beautiful lady from Egypt. You know, he got married to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the yes. first president of the Republic of Ghana. You know, so we, des we designed that particular pattern for her. Uh, for her to honor their good office in the country. Okay. So we say Fatia perfectly matches Nkrumah. Mm -hmm, that's it. Yeah. So we have different patterns. Maybe the motive of this man creating the Makuma Swadie was because of uh, a lady in, her, in his life. Okay. So he wanted to, you know, honor that lady. And so you are my desire. All right. You are my heart desire. So in case someone wants to become a king to mm -hmm. do they need to go to a specific institution to learn? Uh, you don't need to go through maybe a specific uh, institution or organization to become a weaver. You know, one thing about the weaving in this community that especially the people biologically from here, you will not spend enough time, you know, learning the basis of the weaving. Okay. It's something like a generational impact. Oh. So while growing up, you'll be seeing your parents, your brothers doing the weaving. So you only copy the idea from them. Right. And you only need a matter of time to sit in the room. Then you also exhibit your talent on it. Uh -huh. But there are other people too who also want to learn. And they come, they come here or maybe other centers. Okay. Then you need enough time. That one, it depends on how smart you are. Right. Some people can take like six months to do the weaving and it a year or more depending on the type of cloth you so want to make. So if someone wants to learn, can I direct the person here? Oh, you can. Okay. You can. So the last method of weaving? Uh, that's the triple one. Yes. Okay. Let's move to the top there. you see one of the triple okay. weaving. All right. So this is the triple weaving method. Sure. Sure. Uh, this is one of the triple weave patterns in the Kente weaving. And like I said, the triple weave is the most complicated one. Yeah. And uh, I, I can see you, you have to witness it yourself. Yes. Over here, the most work is done by the hand or the fingers. Okay. Unlike the single and the double, you see the shuttle doing the most work over there. Okay. And these ones also come with more intricate of patterns compared to the double weave. You know, in the double weave, uh, it looks much easier because 
the pattern has been programmed ahead of you okay you know so you have something to look upon you have a step ahead of you right. but over here whatever you're doing is in the mind yeah so whilst you're weaving, you still need to communicate with the mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe you know the name of the party you are making, or you have pictured the thing ahead of you. So what you do is that whilst doing the party, then you still communicate with the mind, yeah. and you picture the thing as if it is right in front of you. Okay. Then you'll be creating the pattern to look the same as you have pictured it. Right. So that makes the triple weave very, very tedious and like that. Wow. Okay, so what is the most popular quintain down? The most popular quintain in Ghana? Uh, I would say is uh, we have Ajinia San. Ajinia yeah. San is uh, one of the most popular quintain. You know, Ajinia San is one of the most oldest pattern in the quintain industry, but it is still in the system. All right. The reason is that uh, Ajinia San is being classified as the traditional colors or the, the traditional wear, the traditional color. It comes with all the traditional colors. The red, the blue, the yellow, the, uh, the green colors. Right. They are all combined in that same pattern. So most people uh, use that pattern as a traditional way. Okay. So Arginia San, I would say, is the most popular one. Arginia San. Yeah. Why is it called Arginia San? Uh, the reason behind that name was that, you know, after our forefathers were able to create thousands of the patterns, they had in mind that they would know the pattern to be created. Okay. You know, it was like they were exhausted. Okay. Uh -huh. They have been exhausted all their knowledge and their energy. Yeah. So they decided to combine most of the patterns into one particular code. And they named it the end of all designs. Yes. The end of all the the Arginia in the painting we even refers to a design okay. or pattern. So you see the end of all designs. Okay. Arginia as right. so what what pattern is you making here? Okay. Uh what he's doing here we call the name Assassin. Assassin. Okay. <laughs> when you say Assassin, it means invaluable, something priceless. Okay. You know, this is the most uh difficult uh, pattern in the kente industry wow yeah the most difficult one this is the only pattern in the kente industry that if you want to know how to do it you need to spend time to learn it it doesn't matter how long you are free i have one old man there from here we walk to uh okay. to him he has been in the industry maybe over 50 years spending his uh, whole life doing the weaving wow. but he cannot do this one yeah the reason behind is that this one comes with a different way of making it. Okay. From the setup to the weaving. You see him doing the weaving just like this, but when you sit on it, you cannot do it. You can. You see, there are different parties in the industry here. Mm -hmm. uh, when the weaver uh, get up and I am around, I can be in the loom to continue. But for this particular one, unless you have been, uh, you have studied it. Mm -hmm. If not, you cannot do it. Right, so let, is there anything else you would like to show me? Okay, let me take you to the old man and after okay. we can move to the showroom to see the okay. previous types. Yes. So this is also one of the triple weave patterns yeah. and the triple weave, it comes with different motifs. Mm -hmm. uh, it has different motifs. So when you go to the show, you see different types over there. Alright, so the name for this particular pattern is, uh, you can say Sika Frame Moja. Sika Frame Moja. Okay. Uh, money comes with blood, it causes blood. Right. Uh -huh. You know, you know, you see success is not achieved on a silver platter. Yes. So when you see some people making good use of their money, 
spoiling it, spending it. You see, it comes with a, a, a whole lot of uh, stuff, mm -hmm. a whole lot of issues. It can either be you work hard for it or you pass the other way for it. Whatever yeah. it is, it is still not easy to make money. Yes. Uh -huh, that's it. And this is one of the most oldest patterns in the Kente industry. Okay. By looking at how the colors were being uh, combined, you can see it. And like I said, every pattern in the Kente has a meaning. So from here to here, we call it Babadia. 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 Yeah. Okay. Babadia. When you say Babadia, Babadia refers to a strength. You know, there are some plants in the forest when our parents give birth to the younger ones, uh, they will be cutting the branches and they leave, they soak it into water and use the water to bath the younger ones. Okay. The idea behind is that when they grow up, uh, they will not be attacked by sicknesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's some kind of protection. Okay. That's true. Then we have what we call as a motua from here to here. Okay. We call it a motua. And motua means I've offended you. But I cannot come down with you to see if I apologize. So I just consult my old daddy here. Daddy intervene on my behalf to seek for an apology. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, motto. So when you come okay. to the Asante Empire here, we have whom we refer to us as the Jatwa here. Okay. That's the intermediate chief. Yeah. Uh, so he resolves issues between two parties, conflicts okay. and others. And then here, we call this one Ahmene Pankasa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see the quality bees they don't they does not make noise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you see every kente has a name and a culture meaning to it. Okay. So the patterns are not just being created for just uh, the use of the beauty or something. Okay. So every kente I've seen here today looks like a template, right? Mm -hmm. So how is it combined to make a full set floor? Okay. Every kente is made on strips like this. Yes. They are all made on strips. And after we stick them together, we join them together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you put them into pieces and you join them. Mm -hmm. That's how it's being done. Okay. So you've been in the kente weaving industry for so long, right? Yeah. What do you think that the government or what do you think is to be done to improve or put kente out there? Mm, okay. You know, uh, <laughs> Every Kinke River is uh, dreaming of getting a yarn factory. All right. You know, uh, the most difficult aspect in the weaving is the yarns. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And Kinte being in existence over 300 years, and we still don't have uh, a factory that produces the yarns. And as I'm speaking today, we still import yarns oh. from uh, outside, you know, uh, a signal. Right. So what we need most is the yarn factory. Also, we need a kente hub, like a kente village, as you see here. You can, you can see different uh, stores in different yeah. places. Look at those people uh, uh, doing the weaving outside there. You know, it, it's not it, it's not attractive at all. Mm -hmm. When it rains, it you just have oh, to stop working. Yes. So you need the places like that, and also maybe some capital to boost the rivers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need a lot, and moreover, a patent right for the kente, a okay. patent right. Kente does not have a patent right, so the Chinese can set his own place and you know steal our part in that. Yeah. We think it is valuable. It is priceless, and you will do a printed version of it and okay. come to the, the same uh, country and sell it. So you see, is our country being serious? No. no. And what is the government doing about it? Right. I mean, being here, <laughs> I cannot protect it. No. We have been trying our best to protect it, but it's not up to here. So okay. we need the authority to, you know, come in the aid. All right. So. Kinte is known as a very expensive crop. Mm -hmm. Why do you, what makes Kinte so expensive? Uh, first, I would say is the yarns. When the yarns become expensive, the weaving become expensive. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, that's why I was uh, requesting for the yarn factory. Okay. Uh -huh. And you know, the work is also very tedious. You know, it comes with a lot of work. People don't know. People think that when I order you a crop today, you need to deliver it the next day or the next week. There are crops that will take you like eight months to a year 
wow. to complete. Yeah, that pattern we just visited. The, the assassin cloth. Uh -huh. yeah. That one will take you like eight months to you to complete a full cloth. So imagine how long you are going to do with this one wow. and how much you are putting into it. And after you will gain nothing. Right. And these ones you take like three months to complete it. So Kente, though it's not all that expensive. Kente does not deserve the prices it's supposed to be. Mm, it does not. Looking at the time spent on it and the yarns you consume, you're supposed to have charged more. You know, when you travel outside Ghana, eh, things that are made by hand, the yeah. handmade materials are very expensive. It's only in Ghana and maybe some parts of Africa that are handmade goods are not being valued. But when you go to Europe and other uh, countries, the handmade materials, I tell you, very, very expensive. You cannot buy it. Okay, so Nana, sir, is there anything that you would like to add? Oh, uh, for now, uh, uh, let's get to the showroom and right. see the variety of the parties over there. Alright, let's go. Say hello, when you be best say, when you be best say. Okay, so what do we have here? All right, I told you before, uh, we have stages of the evolutions of the Kente weaving. Like I said, yeah. the weaving never started in the loom as we saw outside there. It started from a small scale, then uh, it jumped into the loom weaving. So what we see here is one of the stages of the weaving. We call this one the ground weaving or the background weaving. Okay. Uh, we have uh, like three types or the three stages of the weaving. We have what you call as ayasentuma. When we say ayasentuma, that's a cloth wove on the solar presence. Then we have the asasentuma, that's the ground weaving. The ground right. weaving. So this is a typical illustration on the board, since we cannot do it on the ground here. Okay. So this is the typical illustration on the board here, that's the background weaving. They put pegs on the floor and they start by doing the weaving in this form. But oh. one thing to bear in mind that back in the olden days there were no strings or yarns like this to be used so they were only using some leaves in the forest as raw materials and such of those leaves are the raffia palms normally found on the riverside then also fiber from some plants like plantain so these were the materials they were using in making the weaving before they got the attention who from the winina tree and the cutting the sec from the other plants Mm -hmm. so, uh -huh. so these are the stages of the weaving. And you know, uh, the first kente cloth made in the system of weaving was called Gagamuga. That was the first ever kente cloth made in the system of weaving. We call it Gagamuga. When you say Gagamuga, it means a pin stride. Mm -hmm. Gagamuga is a typical Ashanti or an Akan word. When you say Gagamuga, it means I am having interaction with you. Mm -hmm. Then I made a statement that is of no use. So you in return say me penyaga, me penyaga. Okay. Uh -huh. That's it's of no importance to you. You don't need it. That's gagamuga. That's the first ever kente cloth made in the system of women. and that was made with only black and white colors. Yeah. That was after the introduction of the yarns to the kente industry. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So like I said, we have different patterns, different variety of patterns and colors here. So let's go around and I'll pick one or two of them. Mm -hmm. Then I'll give you the detailed aspect of it. All right. Okay, I first made mention of the Fatia Fatan Chroma. So this is uh, the Fatia Fatan Chroma cloth. Okay. So this was the particular cloth that was designed to honor uh, uh, the beautiful the wife lady. to yeah, yes. the first lady to Dr. Kwame Chroma, uh, Fatia. So we see Fatia perfectly matches mm -hmm. Chroma. Okay. So this is how it looks like. So this is the blue background of it. There are other colors too. You can see a black dominating and All also right. uh, a pink color, green, uh, mauve and another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So looking uh, at the top there, you can see the black one over there. So this is Fatia Fatankoma. But before the name Fatia, this particular quote was called One Man Cannot Rule a Nation. It's still Bakufu Mumai. Oh. Mm -hmm. and that's a, so that was before it was called Fatia? Be, that was before it was called uh, Fatia. Okay. 
Okay. So when uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah came on power and presented the wife, then the people of Bonnie decided to bring some patterns, modernize it, and presented it to the first lady. Okay. Then we also have the Arginia Sun pattern. This is uh, the Arginia Sun one. I think I've seen this one. We've seen this one before. Yes. Yeah, you will see it. Like I said, this is one of one the most, most popular painted clothes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pattern there, that one. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the Arginia uh, Sun Court. So in most of times, maybe being on a Deba occasions or other uh, festivities, you can see this type of cloth. Yes. Uh, yeah, over there. And you can see all the colors in it. And these colors all also symbolize something in their Santi culture. So picking the yellow, it means that river minerals in our soil. You know, Santi, mm -hmm. we are rich in gold, uh, bauxite, and all the uh, minerals. So this represents the minerals in the soil. Then we have uh, the green, which is the agriculture areas, the plants vegetation. and other. Yeah, the vegetation. Then we have uh, we have red, uh, which is the blood and toll of our fathers. Aye. You see, uh, you know, the Asantis, we say before the colonial era, Asantis were already an empire. Mm -hmm. Asantis were the, one of the kingdoms, uh, the surviving kingdoms. Uh, so the people who fought and yield their blood to, you know, uh, attain the freedom, the independence for the Asantis and occupy the many of the lands. We use this red to, you know, stand for them. Then we have the black in it, which represents the hope of Africa. Oh. The hope of Africa or the traditional tools. Mm -hmm. So you see, Kinti speaks. Oh, yeah. Kinti speaks. So you, when you see the kings, the chiefs being on a deba and they are wrapping their beautiful cloth, they are not just, uh, use, uh, they, it's not just an uh, ordinary cloth they are using. So you see, Kente is not just like an ordinary cloth you see outside. Kente is being notified as being its uniqueness, the value of it, and how complicated it is. So especially Otum, for any time he's on a Dekese or a Deba, the patterns he use space. Yes. It means something. All right. That's it. So where do we go to next? Mm. Anything you want us to add up. Okay, so I can see I think we have beads. Uh -huh. These are all product of Okay, so Nana, sorry, thank you for your time. Yeah, you thank you for me. educating us. Yeah. Thank you for watching Countryside and or 2 aj TV. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below what you think about this video. My name is Ekuya Nesavrin. Stay tuned.